Hello, hello, welcome to another video. Yes, we are here with fragrances that I received from my birthday one way or another. So this will be kind of a whole video. Another whole video is supposed to come probably, probably November, I guess, because I did gather a bunch of fragrances, but today we only have 11 fragrances, so these got to me either gifted by friends, family, or even myself, just one of these 11 fragrances is from a brand. So it just happened that it kind of arrived around my birthday, so I decided to just put it in this video for that particular reason. Also, please excuse me for the way I talk and for the way I breathe, I'm having allergies so it's really hard for me to breathe through my nose. I am breathing through my mouth, which, what can I say? It's a pleasure. So let's begin in no particular order. Let me just grab one of these, okay? So this one, let me show it to you closer. Um, it's been pretty hyped recently. I have to tell you that this is why I got it. Yes, I'm a sucker for hype, I admit it. This is called Kamrach. It's from La Tapa, and it's supposed to be a dupe for uh, Angel's Share from Killian. Even the bottle, I can kind of suggest that. This is like a square shape type of uh, glass, um, while the other one is more round. But of course, I don't really care about the packaging. Um, I'm gonna do a video where I compare, like I go more in depth about this scent uh, and compare it with uh, Killian's Angel Share because that's one of my favorite scents so I think uh, this will be an interesting video but for now I have to say that I am a little bit underwhelmed by this I'm not saying it's bad I don't think it's bad but I don't think it's that similar so if you're blind buying it like I did and by the way because of this big request for it, like there was a lot of demand for this one, uh, people were looking for it and it was out of stock everywhere, the prices went up. So yeah, I I don't know about paying like 60 dollars or euros or around that price for this one, I'm not sure if it's worth it, uh, like I said, I don't think it's a bad fragrance, just for me and on my skin, and for my nose, this is not so similar to Angel's Share, not not as similar as I was expecting it. Like, um, Latafa usually does very good dupes, but in this case, yeah, I mean, this is a good fragrance on its own, it's okay, it's nice, um, it kind of goes in the same area-ish, but not close enough for me. The fragrance I mentioned in the beginning that came from a brand, the brand is Orientica and the fragrance is Velvet Gold and this is the box. This again will have a separate video, I will present it to you um, in about a week or two I think. This is the fragrance, I have to say that I'm very pleased with it, I really like it, I wore it, I'll tell you more when I talk about it in more depth, like I said then okay what else a fragrance again it's in the box i don't know with some fragrances i keep them in the boxes uh, with others i don't i guess when the box is really how to say to get to the fragrance is really easy it's accessible let's just say maybe that's a good word okay this is how it looks i really like the inside of this one again it kind of it kind of reminds me of although this is now red it kind of reminds me of um, vampires for some reason, I don't know, I've seen too many vampire movies. But anyway, the fragrance, let's get back to the fragrance, right? The fragrance is called uh, Pink Marc de Champagne Truffle. Yeah, I kind of combined French with English here. This is a 30 ml. Uh, the brand is called Pana, Panach. I'm not sure exactly how to read it, but I guess I'll just go with the... A basic um, type of uh, reading that is probably not that but and this is a very cute little bottle this smells 
like the most realistic chocolate. Uh, yeah, this is like a Belgian chocolate, very rich, very realistic, sweet, but deep. This is actually, I would say, a little bit too realistic for me. But it's 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 amazing. I mean, it smells so good. It smells like the inside of a um, luxury, like good quality chocolate place. This is it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how wearable this is, actually. I think this is its biggest issue. The fact that it's because it's so realistic yeah it's i find it a little bit hard to wear uh i just got it so uh, yeah we'll see how it goes in the future a fragrance i had on my wish list for such a long time i mean when i say long time it's been a few years since i put follow from kerosene on my wish list yeah so um this was a blind buy because yes i didn't get to smell it but i knew this was a coffee scent and i love my coffee scents and i have a bunch um i don't have um awake from acro anymore but i kind of replaced it with this one although they are not that similar so this is less less gourmand on a scale of how gourmand the fragrance with coffee is compared to awake and compared to coffee addict this is less gourmand, but it's still, it's still delicious. It's still delicious. I will say that for those of you who think that, oh, how can I wear a fragrance that smells like tiramisu or like coffee, like latte? Uh, it's too realistic. Once again, since we were talking about this one being too realistic on the chocolate note. Well, this loses a bit of that realistic feel compared to those two. So if you smell the wake and coffee addict, this is less realistic, which makes it more wearable. So yeah, I really like it. I feel like the, um, the longevity is pretty good with it. I like this a uh, very uh, rough bottle. It, it looks like it was uh, made, I don't know, with uh, on a boat in a good way. <laughs> It was made uh, by uh, a handyman on a summer afternoon. I don't know. It just it just looks unfinished, rough, like uh, you know what I mean. In a good way, once again. In a good way. <laughs> I like that when people say, "Oh, this smells like the stinkiest wood," and like, but in a good way. Yes, this is it. Did I show it to you closer? Let me do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You see, it's it's not. It's not shiny, it's not uh, glamorous, yeah, it's nothing like that, but I like it. I was actually very tempted to add more than fragrances to this video, uh, so basically all of the gifts that I got, which would have included a pair of Converse shoes that I've designed myself on their website. So I am pretty crazy with uh, Converse shoes, I have a lot different colors, shapes, uh, um, whatever, prints, whatever. So I've decided to, because I knew that you can do it on their website, you can like design your own. I decided to do it and they just arrived uh, a little bit after my birthday actually. And they are so funky. Yeah, but I decided to stick with just fragrances. So don't worry about it. You won't see anything funky in here. So the next fragrance is from Byredo, has been on my wish list for a million years. <laughs> this and another one from Byredo. But hey, now I have this one and I am very happy about it. So this one is Mojave Ghost. This tells the story about a flower that grows in the desert. I've read a little bit about it and thrives in, let's just say a bad, in bad circumstances, I don't know, in a bad context. Not having uh, water, not having, uh, you know, the best temperatures and so on. So I was a little bit um, scared of um, worries about the violet in here. 
it's it's not it's not bad at all it's beautiful it smells very clean and elegant at the same time i really like it you can wear this one in so many um instances so many um moments i guess um it's really versatile and like i said clean musky floral but in a very it's like it's subtle but it's still it has a presence yeah, I really like it. And it's it's different from everything I have, actually. Two baby fragrances that I got myself. One of them is, um, is a perfume I heard a lot about. People talking quite highly of. Uh, it's called Plum in Cognac. Um, and it's from a brand called Scents Wood. So I, I obviously don't have anything else from this brand. This um, reminded me of um, smoked plums. Um, I know that in Eastern Europe, uh, people do them, like people prepare them in the fall. I don't know the exact process or anything, but I, I would see them in the markets. Uh, my mom would buy them. Uh, you can make different dishes out of them. This is how it smells. It's a smoky plum. It does develop, like, it has some nuances, um, but I still have to play with it because I didn't wear it. Look at the color. I am not sure if you can see. Oh, the light has to go through it, so, yeah, it looks pretty dark, but actually it looks, it kind of has the color of wine. So it's interesting, but I it might be a little bit too smoky for me. I might layer it. Um, it's interesting, though. And the, the oh, okay, <laughs> and the other tiny one is uh, 401 from Bon Parfumeur. Uh, I wanted to get this one for a long time. I decided to get a tiny one when I ordered this one. It was on the same website. Um, so this is about cedre, so um, cedar. Yeah. Um, again, plums and uh, vanilla. So I think I'm not, I don't even remember if I've tested this in the past or I simply knew I would like it. It does remind me of uh, Plum Japonais. Oh, almost put it in my nose. I really like it. What can I say? It does remind me of Plum Japonais from Tom Ford. Yeah, and uh, Feminité du Bois. But Feminité du Bois from uh, Serge Lutens actually has. Um, there is something in the background, I think I told you this when I spoke about it. There is something in the background with that one that is just like Serge Luton's signature or something. Something slightly dirty for me. It develops on my skin that way. Um, not this one, not Plum Japonais. So yes, I actually do prefer this one to uh, Feminité du Bois, but out of all three, I would choose Plum Japonais if I could. To just if I had to just skip one. The next two are supposed to be, well, the original and the dupe for it. So the original is La Danza delle Libellule from uh, Nobile 1942, and it's this one, okay, the the smaller one, and then. Uh, Casablanca from Swiss Arabian is supposed to be the dupe. Um, they don't smell exactly the same. Um, yeah, they don't smell exactly the same. This is this has some rough edges. Well, this one is like you can you can tell immediately after smelling it after smelling them uh, side to side that this is so smooth so smooth and so well blended um but this is not bad this is not bad um if you get past that roughness that you can only see smell well smell when you like i said when you smell them side by side because otherwise um but on its own if you were just to have this one casablanca uh you would think it's it's quite beautiful Again, if you love this um, type of scent, let me see the notes actually for this one. Um, Cas 
Sablanka. I think this is quite hyped. Again, just like uh, Angel's Share uh, dupe from uh, that that one is from La Tafa. This one is from Swiss Arabia. Yeah, so this one has um, green apple, grapes, patchouli. I don't get any patchouli here. Iris, caramel. Yes, it's definitely a combination of fruits. Um, it has amber, suede, musk, and peru balsam. So yes, it's a combination of fruits, especially that apple that's a very present and the caramel yeah it's quite delicious it's um a gourmand let's see if fragrantica says these two are alike i mean it has to be it has to be yeah and there is another one that is similar so um let's see the difference in notes Okay, La Danza delle Libellule, so the original one, has red apple, has bergamot, while well, the other one doesn't have bergamot. Uh, cinnamon, so again, there are some differences. It doesn't have caramel. It has cedar, vanilla, coconut, musk. Yeah, this is like definitely um, a more subtle fragrance. The other one is more in your face. Um, but I really like... La Danza de Lili Belluli, like the qualities here, it's beautiful. It's a niche fragrance, obviously, it's quite expensive and everything. Yeah, I don't regret having those, uh, the two of them, both of them. Um, because I, I don't think they're like exactly the same fragrance, so I can, I can play with them. Uh, and this one is quite affordable, as expected. Two more fragrances. One of them is a disappointment and the other one isn't a disappointment both oh no actually no just one of them was was a blind buy okay let's just start with the disappointment and then let's finish on a happy note um and when i say disappointment it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's horrible it doesn't mean um it's it's a bad it's an ugly fragrance and that i'm not wearing it i am wearing it um, it's just that my expectations were so high that, you know, it's on me. It's me. It's my fault. <laughs> Maison Mataha Escapade Gourmand. Again, a fragrance that I've heard so much about. And this is what, like, feeded, feeded? Yeah. Uh, fed. Fed my expectation. Okay. Uh... <laughs> What does it smell like? So it's supposed to be obviously a gourmand. Uh, kind of, I thought it would be kind of in the same area as Fire at Will from Jovoy. Let me see if it actually, if Fragrantica says it's similar to anything. I'm actually curious about this. I didn't check. And I'll tell you what I think it's similar to. <laughs> and it's not, it's not good. It's not looking good. Mm hmm Oh, seriously? Okay. Nine people say that this is similar to Fire at Will. No. I'm sorry, I cannot agree with this. So to me, yes, to me this is similar <laughs> to something from Bath and Body Works. This is a very expensive fragrance. Uh, I think I think this is the one. I found it here in the list. Worm, worm vanilla, sugar. Yeah, I think this is the one. But also similar to another body mist from um, Victoria's Secret. It smells like sugar in a body mist. I don't know, like a sugary body mist. Vanilla and sugar. Very simple. Very... Very not complex, very basic, very cheap. I do wear, sometimes, I, I mean, I, I have them there. I do wear Bath & Body Works. I always have them in my jean bag. I always have them in my normal bag. I keep them there just in case, whatever. I can use them as spray for the room. But... I mean, seriously, this is this is not supposed to smell like this. Okay, I stop. I'm down to the last one, the last fragrance of this video. And this fragrance was a gift from me to me. 
It's currently the most expensive fragrance in my collection, if I'm not incorrect. I don't think I am. And it's Oud Orange Intense from Fragrance du Bois. I've had this in my wish list for a while. And my birthday was the perfect excuse to actually get this one. It does look a little bit dirty because it's been handled and grabbed and yes. I did wear it quite a bit since I got it. To me this fragrance, it's, it reminds me uh, of a fragrance I have in my collection but I feel like this one is the lighter, more luminous version of that one. So I'm talking about Symphonium from Sergio. That combination of chocolate and um, orange. So I do get, I don't get a lot of chocolate in here. Um, so if I think about chocolate and I smell this one, I don't necessarily get the chocolate on its own, but I do get that orange. I do get like a candy feel to it. Um, but this, like I said, is a more, is a lighter version of that, like a summer version for me. That one being like a more uh, intense version. Although this one is very strong as well, but uh, as a scent profile to me, that one is for winter and this one is for the other seasons. So, well, truth be told, this one does list uh, fruity notes. No, just a second. Fruity notes, yes. So fruity notes might actually contain orange, which I am picking with this one. It lists coconut, bourbon vanilla, musk, and agar wood. I do not get a lot of oud with this one, so it's not very rich in oud or anything, because I know uh, some might feel intimidated by that oud um, and might think it's too harsh or too masculine. I don't think this is masculine at all. This is quite feminine, actually. It's leaning feminine. Sorry, <laughs> it's <laughs> my nose again. Uh, yeah, it's leaning feminine. Um, it's very delicious. It's very wearable, though. I feel like it's very wearable. So although it does kind of uh, smell luxe, it smells expensive, but very wearable. Like, you can wear this one all year round. This is what I love about it. Uh, it lasts for a long time on my skin. I really like it. It's um, so besides being similar to Symphonium, I feel like it's quite different from everything else I have in my collection, which is always a plus, having a lot of fragrances um, and uh, most of them being unique in a large collection. I mean, it's, it's um, something that you want to achieve when you're building your collection. So I guess this is a good addition to my collection. I was very, very excited to get this one. So yeah, now I have it. It's actually my second uh, Fragrance du Bois at this point. I do have a bunch on my uh, on my wish list from this one. I mean, it's a mental wish list in this case. I did not put it... It's I have an official wish list and I have a mental wish list. So I don't want to put them on the official list, wish list because then I have to actually work towards getting them, which I don't want to. I'm very happy with this one for now. And uh, let's just keep it that way for a while. This was my video. These were the fragrances. Yes, uh, from next week, we're getting back to our usual uh, videos. No more birthday themes. Uh, thank you for putting up with me and my weird breathing today. I sound like one of those guys that just call and don't talk and they're like... <sighs> you know, I'm watching The Watcher <laughs> these days on Netflix. It's a new show. So if you're watching that, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that creepy guy now. Okay, that's all from me today. Thank you once more and have a great weekend, what's left of it, and see you next week. Bye-bye!